Good evening. Um, here are some lettuce plants that I planted back, I think, the first week of March. Um, we've got a ton of seed here, and over here, I'll show you in a second, um, is um, our buckwheat. Um, I plant this as a cover crop. I planted it roughly a month ago, just about a, a little over a month ago. Um, I want to cut this before it goes to seed. Um, and so I'm just going to cut these off and drop them as mulch and sprinkle a little bit of lettuce seed um, where I'm cutting these off and start the fall garden. So back when I planted these, um, it was I think, about the 25th of June, um, I spread some compost. So there's some lovely compost that has now been sitting there. Um, so what the, the buckwheat does is it pulls nutrients from the soil um, and then gives you something that you can drop right here and it, the, those nutrients that pulled out of the soil go right back in. Um, but these nice broad leaves, they shade out the weeds. So in this space here, if I hadn't planted anything, would be lots and lots and lots of weeds. But as I go through here and cut these out, I'm in a position to just be able to plant. Now, if I was just planting like some starts, some plants that I'd started, um, I would drop these around as mulch. Um, as it is right now, I'm gonna set them somewhere else just because I want to give space for the lettuce seeds to come up. Now there are a few like little weeds in here, some little uh, tomatoes they are trying to start. If you've been to our channel much, you know I love tomatoes. My husband and I had a dispute recently as to how many tomatoes I planted. Tomato math gets very fuzzy. Um, so I'm just leaving the stalks um, I'm pretty sure that these aren't going to grow back. Eh, we'll have to see. It's a good experiment. I've cut them back closer to frost and they are not frost hardy. So I know the frost would kill them. Um, I don't know if leaving them in August, if they will, um, grow. But we're going to find out. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of those seeds, um, some of the seeds that are over here, um, I'll turn you and show you, and I'm going to pull them out of the pod and I'm just going to sprinkle them here on the soil and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to take this seed pod right here and I'm break that up and then I'm just going to pull it apart. I'm going to pull it, kind of pull the top off. This part right here, um, if you think about like dandelion seeds, which I think you're more used to, um, the fluffy part that kind of lets the seed blow through the air, that's what that part is right there. And then down in here, are my lettuce seeds. So that's just one little pod there. I'm gonna provide I'm already dropping some. So minimum, I would say a dozen to 20 seeds in that one little pod. And so I'm just dropping those right next to just where we were. Um, and then even some of the ones that are a little more broken open, like that one right there, that one is getting ready to drop right there. So again, look at all those seeds. That was just in two pods. Think of the amount of seeds just in one plant and the amount of seeds that are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this right here is enough lettuce seed to probably keep my entire neighborhood in lettuce seed for a very, very long time. Um, so some of that, like I said, I'm just going to sprinkle here and let it grow and some of it I'm going to take inside in store for next year. So I've got a bunch of seed pods here. 
Um, so this is the other side of the kale. Um, same deal over here. Um, I planted buckwheat. Um, now something interesting, when you plant something in multiple places in the garden, um, we'll take one of these. I'll take one of the bigger ones and I'm going to go over to where I planted the buckwheat um, in the garlic batter. Now this has been in far longer than that has. Oops, I found an anthill. <laughs> They're butting my feet. Um, there's ants right there. They were not impressed that I was sitting on them. Um, so again, um, as I was saying before I got attacked by the little ants, um, it's interesting when you plant stuff multiple places in the garden. Um, so like I said, we'll take one of these. You guys get, stop biting me. There. We'll uncover their eggs so they're more concerned with moving the eggs than biting my foot. We'll see how that helps. All right. Um, so when you plant something in multiple places in the garden, you can compare how it's growing. This has been in longer by two, two, three weeks um, than the buckwheat that's over in our garlic bed. This has a smaller leaf and is considerably shorter than that over there, like I said. We'll compare here. I'll cut this one right here all the way at the base. I'll set this aside to go over. I could be more methodical about this, but it's not really my nature. If I had my husband out here, he would be much more methodical. That's how he rolls. That's not how I roll. We pick each on each other on that very often. So this is where we had our garlic planted for the past two years. I've been, um, this is the second year I planted buckwheat after we harvested our garlic. Um, now last year it was smaller. than this. This year the leaves are way bigger. Even, there we go. Okay, so if we compare these two, this has been in since let's say June 25th. This has been in I think second week of July. I can check the date and put it on the screen. Um, but look at the size difference. Um, look at the difference in the stem and the size of the leaf. So I feel like this is telling me something we're doing in this realm right here is is good. Now to be fair this bed over here um, gets competition from our maple tree that's inside our fenced in backyard. Um, the branches come over top of that bed, the branches come over that bed, the roots are underneath. So there is competition here um, but just in general these are way bigger than last year um, and I don't think the conditions are that much different. I did the same thing last year. I did a bucket of compost, planted the buckwheat when I was ready to plant garlic, cut it, dropped it as the mulch, and then planted the garlic. We're heading in the right direction. Something is going right here if the plant is this much bigger this year than last. Today there was beneficials all over these blossoms. And also, side note, I made a couple flower floral arrangements with like these and whatever wildflowers I had around. They were beautiful. So, don't need fancy flowers to have beautiful flower arrangements. Um, this year, this year's garden year is going absolutely wonderful so far. Um, get a view of the garden behind me as I move in here. I think we've harvested at least 50 pounds of tomatoes. We have, I think, 12 and a half quarts canned um, of just, we just do unseasoned tomato sauce. That way it can go any direction. I actually have a video I'm working on. I'm not sure which one's going to get published first. So either I just published it or that's the next one that's coming. We'll see. Um, we've harvested probably around between 30 and 40 pounds of cucumbers that we've eaten as just like fresh salad or we've fermented and we've pickled. Um, so that's going unbelievably. The wall of beans behind me, I can't even imagine how much we're going to get from this. Last year we got roughly 10 pounds of cave beans. 
Um, they're a dried bean. Um, we planted more this year. We had the trellis set up better, so I'm hoping for more than 10 pounds. Also, our sweet potatoes. So our sweet potatoes are doing fantastic. This right here used to be a pathway, and I can't barely get through. And then I don't know if you saw this in a video recent, right here. Now, tomato hornworms will completely destroy your tomato plants. They'll eat the leaves, they'll eat the, the tomatoes, actually like right here. I bet that damage right there was from this guy before he succumbed to the um, parasitic wasp larva um, and they cocooned on him. So the parasitic wasp will lay its egg under the skin of a tomato hornworm and the larva uses that as its host, eating the hornworm, killing it. And then these right here are the cocoons um, for more parasitic wasps. So this is going to create a lot of parasitic wasps that will do the same thing in the garden again, that will kill more tomato hornworms, possibly other caterpillars, um, so I don't know what all that's going to do, but I think that's really cool. So another thing that I've planted for, it's not a cold hardy thing, but something that I planted for more harvest, um, more production out of the garden, is this space here had been potatoes. We harvested the potatoes and then I planted some using no bit and dig um, methods where I just laid the potatoes on top of the soil that was already there. Uh, covered it with compost and then mulched it either with grass clippings or with hay. At the very end, I didn't cover it with compost, I just covered it with hay kind of just to compare how the two different things produced. And I was getting a little bit lazy, it was a really hot day, and I carried enough buckets of compost through the garden. So here, let me show you what we've got. So again, as in many places in my garden, you're going to have to deal with seeing uh, the sweet potato vines take over but we've got potatoes coming here here bunch coming there um, there's some I believe those are a red potato they're coming there too and we've got a little guy right here that just poked his head out from the soil and then we've got some coming through um, the hay mulch here. This did have compost with it the back there. Um, can't quite reach it with my finger to point to it, but that's some potatoes coming up along the back. Um, that's just some of the uh, cave bean that the vine didn't grab on and is coming into the garden bed. Um, and then here, these are some blue potatoes we've actually been planting for a while. Um, they're blue, but they look purple. So you can see the vine itself looks purple as well. And then right there, right kind of the, uh, you can see the purple there. Um, that's right in front of the, uh, the bean leaf right there. That's coming along. This is the portion here. Um, this portion here is where I just laid the hay on top of the seed potato. Now these seed potatoes were just potatoes that I had left over. Um, from uh, from my harvest from last year. They look pretty sad, um, but they're gonna make potatoes. So really excited to see what this looks like later into fall. Um, and the garden is coming along beautifully. I'm enjoying sharing the growing and the harvesting and the processing with all of you. Thank you for those that are coming along for the ride and kind of watching what we're doing and, and sharing your ideas and your thoughts. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight, and we'll see you in the next video soon.